Only 36 years after the first United Empire Loyalist settlers pitched their tents in the forests of Upper Canada, a young Scottish immigrant named John A. MacDonald arrived with his family to begin a new life. This adventurous young boy would soon grow up to become the principal architect of Canada and its first prime minister. During the course of the next 67 years, he would create a nation from sea to sea. Sir John Alexander MacDonald was born in Glasgow, Scotland on January 11, 1815. In 1820, the MacDonald family left Scotland for British North America and took the perilous journey across the North Atlantic to Kingston in Upper Canada. They settled here for four years, and when John was nine, the MacDonalds moved to the Bay of Quinte. The family lived on Hay Bay in a clapboarded wooden structure painted red with a wooden shingled roof. Although this house has long vanished, the memories of the happy time spent there remain with John A. MacDonald all his life. Today, a cairn marks the spot where young John lived in the farming community of Loyalist Upper Canada. The wiry lad and his sisters, Margaret and Louise, walked three miles morning and evening from Hay Bay to the school at Adolphus Town. The teacher's desk was at the vacant end, and a pail of water in the corner was about the only piece of furniture in this temple of learning. The little wooden schoolhouse proved to be a place where John A. would discover a passion for reading. Here, he also developed self-discipline and the extraordinary ability to remember not only things he'd learned in school, but names and faces. These were skills he developed at a very early age, perhaps with the guidance of his strict teacher, an elderly Scotsman known as Old Hughes. When John was 11, his parents sent him to private schools in Kingston to receive a formal grammar school education. For the next four years, he discovered he loved to learn. His teachers noted his special gifts and used his work to demonstrate exemplary work. John returned home during the long summer and winter vacations. Throughout these early years, he was coached by his father, mother, and his adult cousins. They suggested that he had three choices for a career. He could go into the trades, like his father, the shopkeeper, the clergy, or law. He thought carefully and chose law. It was a wise choice. When John A. was 15 and about to leave school forever, his father moved from Hay Bay to Glenora in Prince Edward County. There, he rented the stone mills and began to process grain and wool. John helped his father when he came home. As a teenager, he was known to play pranks on his best friends. One time, he pranked one of his biggest friends and was caught red-handed in the flour mill. His friends sat on him and rubbed flour into his black hair until it was all white, to the great amusement of John and his friends. Today, the last of the old stone mills still stands beside the ferry dock at Glenora. It is a lasting reminder of some of the happiest days of John's life, growing up as the son of a miller in rural Upper Canada. George Mackenzie, a prominent lawyer in Kingston, offered him a position in his law office. There, John worked for two years. He worked as a law clerk, and in his spare time, he studied law. It was clear to all who knew him at this time that he was a gifted young man with a promising future. John was 17 when Mackenzie sent him to run a new branch law office in Napanee for a year. While he was there, he lived with his elder cousin, Alan McPherson. When he turned 18, he resigned from the Mackenzie law firm and moved to Picton to take over the law practice of his chronically ill cousin, Lowther McPherson. John jumped at the opportunity and ran the law practice in Picton as a pro tem lawyer for two years. He enjoyed his job, and he was very well liked in the community. He also got his first taste of politics in the new courthouse when he volunteered as the polling clerk for the dramatic election of 1834, which set the stage for the 1837 rebellion and the democratic reforms that were to follow. And in his spare time, he volunteered in the community as secretary of the first school board the first agricultural society, and the newly formed Young Men's Debating Society. So he was not only learning about how the law worked, how the colony was governed, but also about the importance of volunteering to make life better for everyone. As an apprentice lawyer, John A. presented his first court case at age 19. 
he defended himself on a charge of assault and won. At the age of 20, he moved to Kingston and opened his own successful law practice on Quarry Street. Within the first year of practice, he acquired a reputation for ingenuity and quick-wittedness as a defense attorney and won cases. John continued to volunteer in many areas of the society and soon became interested in politics. He was elected first as an alderman, then as the representative for Kingston in the Legislative Assembly. In his remarkable career, he rose to become the joint premier of the province of Canada and later the principal architect of the British North America Act of 1867. That same year, on July 1st, he became the first Prime Minister of the Dominion of Canada. Sir John A. Macdonald traveled extensively throughout his life and lived and stayed in many places in Canada and abroad. Sir John A. was most at home along the eastern shores of Lake Ontario. He always felt a special kinship here because of his happy memories and close family ties. However, as he became more of a statesman, involved with all regions of what was to become the Dominion of Canada, he considered his home to be more than the many places where he had lived during his long career. The good old county. My early associations are connected with Prince Edward. Some of the happiest days of my life were spent here. I here obtained my professional education, and here in this good old town of Picton, I earned my first fee and made my first speech to a jury in this very courthouse. Since I was five years old, I have been in Canada, and all my hopes and dreams and remembrances are Canadian. Not only are my principles and prejudices Canadian, but I feel as much as anyone else, my interests are Canadian. Ooh. 